morning and welcome to Shiloh's online worship service. We are so glad to have you join us this morning as it is such a wonderful time of year. Uh, today starts the first week of Advent and I'm just so excited because Advent reflects everything about expect expectation on Jesus. And so this morning as we open up in prayer, um, I would just like to say let's just focus on him. Let's just have our hope in him and let us have an expectation that he will show up in our lives right where we are. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are, that you sent your son, Father God, that we have a hope and we have a future in Jesus' name. God, I just, um, I'm just in awe of everything that you've done to make sure that we have a way to make it back to you, Father God that the little baby Jesus, who's no longer a baby anymore, could grow up and literally sacrifice his life for us, Father God. I can't imagine sending my own son to do this for other people, but God, you, you love us that much. And so God, during this season of Advent, I just ask that you would show up, that you would show yourself so strong, that each week we would learn something new about you and it would draw us closer to you. God, again, I just thank you for everything that you've done and who you are, God. Let us bless your name this morning in our praise and worship, and let Pastor John come forward with your word, and God, it would just be a powerful moment with you. God, we praise you, we love you, in Jesus' name, amen.
come. <laughs> Today's scripture lesson is from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. Now hear the lesson. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by roaring, the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy word.
mountain you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible all things are possible We begin the season of the Advent. And today's scripture is from Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, beginning with verse 14. Israel is in exile. And the prophet Jeremiah speaks to bring comfort to those who are in tragedy and to say that God's promise will be fulfilled, that there will forever be a king on the throne of Israel. These words. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Exile has come upon the Israelites and when life is threatened, there is often a failure of imagination. The ability to be able to picture things and see things is a marvelous gift given to us by God. We can think in pictures. But when life is threatened, our imagination sometimes fails us. And there are often two very different responses to tragedy. Both are a failure of imagination. The first one is this. It will happen to me. And so in the midst of exile, I am sure there were those among the Israelites who walked the long journey in 586 BC to go to Babylon. Captives and along the way, they saw their comrades fall and die. And I imagine they said, this will happen to me. They saw their comrades become slaves. This will happen to me. 
we will never get home. It will happen to me is a fear. It comes and it's hard to shake. Something bad has happened to someone else, so something bad will happen to me. We've all heard of Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will. Another saying is, better safe than sorry. Another one is, it's always darkest before the storm. These sayings are a failure of imagination. Disaster comes upon others. Disaster will come upon us. In these days of a lingering COVID pandemic, COVID has become an obsession for some. People apply Murphy's Law with it. The reasoning goes something like this. I know someone who's died from COVID. Someone in my family gets COVID. My relative will die. People try to prepare for disaster by paying attention to fear. Now there's a difference between being responsible and cautious and filling one's mind with fear. We have become a people so obsessed with bad news that we fill our heads with it and it harms our souls. It will happen to me. The second uh, response to tragedy is an interesting one. It is completely the opposite. It will never happen to me. This is a way that people try to deal with tragedy by pretending to be invulnerable. It may happen to everyone else, but it can't happen to me. Slogans are like this. Most of what we worry about never happens. Barking dogs seldom bite. I remember playing uh, tennis um, avidly earlier in my years even belonged to a tennis club. And I, a number of my friends were getting tennis elbow. And I remember thinking to myself, I will never get tennis elbow. And then I got tennis elbow. I remember somebody in my church falling off a ladder. And I said to myself, I will never fall off a ladder. And then I fell off a ladder and broke my wrist. We say things like it will never happen to me to try to protect ourselves by giving a vow to ourselves. We say things like, I'll never get cancer, I'll never get dementia, or I'll never have back trouble, or I'll never have a nervous stomach, as if saying this psychologically will mean it can't possibly happen. We try to protect ourselves from weakness by vows. Now, we can vow all we want and still not be able to protect ourselves from that which we are vowing with. And so I have tried to stop saying such things, that this will never happen to me. Because we just don't know, do we? 
Watch out if we think we cannot ever possibly be homeless, ever possibly get sick, or lose our jobs, or ever be in an accident, or ever get divorced, or on and on it goes. You see, the difficulty with saying it will never happen to me is that the saying reveals that we are depending on ourselves primarily. And by saying it will happen to me, we are showing that we are depending primarily on fear. And so, there it is. And Israel has a failure of imagination. They thought they were invulnerable. They thought that things that happened to other nations could not possibly happen to them. After all, God had promised that there would always be a son of David on the throne of Israel. Of course, that promise was made by God to help the leadership of Israel to be faithful to God, to lead well, to have in mind those who were weak, But Israel thought they were invulnerable because of that promise. And soon there would be a divided monarchy and the kings would lead the people astray and the people would neglect, along with the leaders, the most vulnerable members of their society in favor of their own greed. The people of Israel were so certain that they were invulnerable because they knew that God lived in the temple in Jerusalem. And that if God lived in the temple and resided there, then the destruction of Jerusalem is impossible. God is their defender. And yet... The prophets warned them to repent from the directions they were going, and they did not. And the destruction by Babel of, um, of Israel and Jerusalem by Babylon was horrific. The people were taken captive. They were dragged from their land, deprived of their temple. The city was burnt. There were people who were beaten, imprisoned, and killed, and they cry out in despair. And yet, after the fall of Jerusalem, even when they fail in their imaginations and think, where has gone, God gone? We will never get back to their home, our homeland. God will will never be there for us again. Jeremiah tells them that is not so. God promises hope. And so Jeremiah says the days are surely coming when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days... And at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. So out of a ruined monarchy, a picture is given of a stump And from that stump shall grow a new tree. The image fits the truncated Davidic 
dynasty. It appears the eternal line of kings has been cut short, but God says no. Out of the stump will come a new leader, a righteous branch from the line of David who will fulfill what former leaders could not do. We know that that righteous branch is Jesus Christ our hope. We are to dream of what God wants. Our vision here is to seek and share God's gift of oneness. God wants people in relationship with God, to be one with Him. God wants people caring for one another, to be one with the weak. God wants people having enough, being free, working with purpose to carry out the kingdom of God on earth. Now here at Shiloh, we support living in testimony, led by Tyler Smith, who is their director. And I want you to see this video now that explains their ministry of sober living houses to those who have been addicted and homeless and imprisoned, come forth and want to live a new day in hope. Notice through this video all the hopefulness that is in it, given by a relationship with Jesus Christ. My name is Tyler with The Lit Movement. Now the lit part stands for living in testimony. And we believe it is our testimony and what God is doing in our lives is that what is setting others free. So lit focuses on men in recovery housing. We have recovery housing located in the Cincinnati area. We're in College Hill and in Price Hill towards downtown. So we really strive to seek men who are broken and done with themselves. Men that are coming out of jails, treatment, or detox, or just homelessness. And we seek to find men who are really willing to do whatever it takes in order to change their lives and ultimately get closer to God. I did 13 years in prison. Uh, I was homeless, walking the streets. I was on drugs and alcohol. I joined the Lit Movement. And when I got there, I still didn't know much about God. But any questions that I had that was going on in my life, the answer was God. And the more and more that was embedded in my life, the more and more I use. Today, God has uh, restored my relationship back with my children. Um, today, they think I'm a superhero. I'm not a villain today. Uh, all glory goes to God on that, and I couldn't ask for nothing more. So the LIT program currently houses a total of 30 men. This is our third house, and this is fully renovated. This houses about 10 men. Now we believe that God is moving in the community of the lit houses. And sometimes you just need to be around a community of men that are doing recovery, that are on fire for God's heart, and it can propel you forward like nothing else. So if you're hungry for God or just haven't even experienced God, but you have a willingness for change and a willingness to seek Him, this may be the place for you. So if you're ready to make a change today, and God's pulling on your heartstrings, and you don't even know what that looks like, but you're ready to make that transition to something greater and something better for you, yourself, and your life. Check us out on the website, click the Contact Us link, and I can't wait to see what God's got in store for your life. Jeremiah sums things up by saying the days are surely coming. And this is the name by which it shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. So Jesus will come. He's given a name that is above all names. 
Jesus is Lord. And the Lord is our righteousness. Jesus is our righteousness. Righteousness will not come by our own efforts. We cannot be saved from tragedy merely by saying it will happen to me or it will never happen to me. It is by the grace of God that enables us to be new and to be right with God. Jesus would go to the cross to take all that can separate us from God so we may be forgiven and have the gift of salvation. Jesus would plant his very self inside those who desire to follow the living Christ. The Holy Spirit would indwell those followers. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, we can share good news with those who are oppressed and poor, with those who fear tragedy. We can live in righteousness because Jesus is greater than our sin, our poverty, our wounds, our fear our oppression, and even our past. The days are surely coming. The Lord is our righteousness. Take this good news into yourself and let us thank God. The Lord is our righteousness. In this season of Advent, we wait for our Lord to be revealed once again. And so let us pray. God of righteousness, you have saved us from the worst the world can do and have promised to redeem the whole creation when Christ comes again. In faith and in hope, we offer ourselves, our gifts of money, our gifts of service, that we may be part of what you are doing in the world, even now, as we watch for Christ's coming in glory. Amen. Go into the world, awake to the signs of God's invitations to new life. Know that the reign of Christ draws nearer with each right action we choose. In his name we pray, amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.